Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to use our latest sensorless control algorithm to control a surface mount PMM magnetosynchronous motor that we have here. And actually in this test we put it, we coupled it with a, with a load, with a hysteresis brake, just to investigate about the startup performance under load. And as you can see here, I'm having around 1.1 Newton meter on this motor, which is rated almost for uh, less than two Newton meters. So it's pretty much near to its maximum torque. And uh, I'm using here Solo Uno, and the voltage is at 48 volts. So the motor is, dri dr is driven by 48 volt. And we can also control the, the amount of torque on the uh, hysteresis brake. So for that, uh, we have to start with motion terminal. So if I go to motion terminal and get connected to my unit through USB cable that I have here, motion terminal will detect the, the model number of the unit, which is shown here. And then if I go to action section, I have a bunch of parameters that I need to make sure they're correctly set. So I will start with motor current limit, which is set at 10 amps. So basically it's pretty good for this motor, it's at the maximum. Then we have this regeneration current limit that is defining the current that goes back to the supply. So I haven't re reduced it all the way to zero because even though I'm using a DC-DC supply, but still a little bit of current is allowed to go back. And also it's necessary for dynamic performance of the system. So don't reduce it all the way to zero if it's not necessary. And then we have the number of poles of the motor. This motor is eight poles. So that's why I set eight here. And the motor type, which I selected the uh, normal brushless TC permanent magnetic synchronous motor, which is kind of for motors below 2000 RPM or nearly 3000 RPM. Actually, this motor can go to higher speeds. So we could select the ultra fast motor type that you can see here. But for now, for this test, I'm going to stay with the normal brushless TC and PMSM motor. And uh, the nominal speed of this motor is actually something around 5000 RPM at 48 volt. So that's helpful later. So the next thing you need to make sure is the motor identification is done once at least. You don't need to repeat this every time you get connected to solo. This is a one-time process if the unit is remaining connected and everything, no change in wiring or so on. So I have done it before. I'm not going to do it again. And the next thing I need to make sure is what is the feedback control mode that I'm operating in. I'm operating in sensorless control. So I have to select this sensorless V2O. And once you select that, you can see a menu appearing here that is about transition speed. So this, the speed that we go from partially closed loop to full closed loop sensorless control. And this speed is roughly 20% of the nominal speed of the motor. So uh, this motor has 5,000 RPM, 20% of it is actually 1,000 RPM, but for now, even 900 RPM was okay for us. So you can even reduce it further if you keep testing and find the best combination. Once that's done, I'm gonna be in a speed mode. So the control type is gonna be on a speed and digital fashion because I'm gonna send the data packets. And uh, I need to make sure the speed controller KP and KR are tuned. We have a lot of materials on that. So basically it's uh, tuning based on the dynamics of the system. I have here KP 0.12, and for KI I have 0.002. And then once everything is ready, I let the monitoring to go on. So I'm gonna have an eye on the torque and the speed of the motor. Torque is in blue and the speed in red. And we will start with a first initial speed that will be a bit higher than the transition speed. So transition is 900 RPM. You need to always stay on top of that. So we go to 1,200 RPM. And here we go. So the motor starts in, a, in the first phase of the algorithm in the partially closed loop fashion, and then it transit to the uh, complete closed loop. And you can see we are at 1,200 RPM very accurately, and we have a current consumption around two amps. So if I increase the speed even to 1,500 RPM, so the speed will increase. 
And I also, if I touch the, the load, if I reduce it, you will see the blue plot is reducing. So going less because the load is reducing but the speed is constant and I can also increase it. So this is actually something around 1.1 or 1.2 Newton meter. So once I'm increasing the load, still the speed is constant. And uh, that's pretty much it. The most important parameter here to start under load condition is the current limit because the startup actually goes with full torque. So the first part of the plot that I just showed you is looking at this current limit. So try to keep it as high as you can. And once the motor starts, it will naturally consume far less current depending on the load on the shaft. Thank you so much. Please subscribe to our channel and stay tuned.